So you want to work inside the 3D printing industry because you got a printer at home and you really want to mess around with it more professionally. So this is a question that we get asked a lot because we do a lot of mass production 3D printing. We're one of the guys who do this. But when applicants come to us, we always kind of have an evaluation criteria that we go through in order to evaluate if they're right for 3D printing. And there's an interesting kind of a paradox at the beginning of this. Generally, on the technical side, if someone has past experience with 3D printing, we don't really want that because the home 3D printing, especially home 3D printing, hobbyist 3D printing, creates a set of criteria and ideas that are generally not very helpful, especially in a professional or mass production context. Hobby 3D printing is like being someone who knows how to carve a chair, but then you wanna go work at a chair factory. Hand carving a chair is very different from mass producing chairs. And this is the issue that we run into with people who have had past experience with like home 3D printers. They are way too hands-on and not aware of the kind of optimization and the kind of scaling problems that come in with mass production 3D printing. So it can be a challenge unless you have actually worked in mass production. But then there's also a question of have you worked with a particular technology or have you not? So the best way to do it is just kind of get a wide breadth of knowledge about that, but then cultivate kind of basic engineering problem solving skills how to identify that a problem is present, which is kind of a rare skill, and then how do you actually get to a solution from that problem? That is incredibly valuable if you want to be an engineer inside of 3D printing. Because the industry is so new, a lot of us don't know what to do or how to respond to certain issues that arise because the standards have not been put in place, the practices have not been put in place. So for you to really thrive inside of 3D printing, you need to have a high level of creativity and a high level of problem solving ability that has been demonstrated in some area that does not necessarily have to be 3D printing. Because again, a home 3D printer, cool, you know how to use a slicer, but that does not mean that you know how 3D printing works or have a very deep knowledge of it. Focus on like product design and engineering around materials and design for manufacturing processes, that is incredibly valuable. If you have experience in how to design for injection molding, that is a useful skill inside of 3D printing. None of the direct rules transfer at all because 3D printing and injection molding are different processes. But if you want to pursue design for mass production 3D printing, and you've already done it with molding, the same type of mindsets transfer over. So that could be really good. Right now, 3D printing is moving into an era of mass production, and it's less about how the machine works and more about how do you make a good part out of those machines. And that is still highly varied, but the processes and the mindsets for that of how to design for injection molding can apply over to 3D printing. Okay, that's engineering. You can design the parts or you can learn really good problem solving fundamentals in order to develop new systems. If you're not in the engineering field, well, we'll take one step back and we'll go to industrial design. Industrial design has a huge opportunity right now because if you are an industrial design student, then you have probably a portfolio of products that you would love to have manufactured. Well, now 3D printing is enabling that. You might actually be able to get some shoes 3D printed and create your own line or you can create a new product or a new lamp or anything else and actually have it produced, which has never been possible before. So if you're in the industrial design, product design kind of category, you might just start up a company and just design a product that's really good and manipulate and put together a service and a website so that you don't have to print all this stuff and don't have to deal with the technical grit of getting it produced, but you are actually able to create products. If you're not in industrial design and you might still be artistic and working in like marketing and that kind of thing, well, good heavens, there is a bottomless pit of stuff that you can do with 3D printing. 3D printing right now is an engineering forward industry. We need more marketers or more creators and artists involved in it, not only creating products, but learning how to communicate them because engineers not be good at talking. So if you're working in marketing, find a 3D printing company and sell yourself. Since you are talking to engineers, make sure that you sell yourself in kind of a monetary context. Don't go in saying, I'm gonna do a social media post for you every day. That's not very helpful and an engineer will hate that. Go in and say, I wanna drive more traffic and more value to your website. Here are the metrics that I've done before. I built this other Instagram account. We can grow it this fast by doing this, that, and the other thing. Be very precise. 
You just have to do it for the interview, and then after that, you can go crazy like the artist that you are. But you are convincing predominantly engineers when you're applying for an interview at a 3D printing company. So you have to be analytical when you first start out and prove that you can be analytical because that's just kind of what everybody is going to be thinking towards right now as the industry is laid out. But ultimately, what it comes down to, guys, the, the rules for becoming working in the 3D printing industry versus any other industry are not that different. If you have a background in 3D printing, great. Make sure that you're able to check that at the door because if you're going into another company, there are rules and new things that they're doing that your experience probably doesn't cover. They don't teach it in very many classes. They certainly is not always on YouTube because again, it has such a hobby focus. So if you're in the engineering area, make sure that you're able to learn quickly and adjust because it's very possible that you learn some bad habits. But the real opportunity for all you guys out there is in product design. The 3D printing industry has a phenomenal shortage of good ideas of what to make with the machines. And we need more people coming up with those ideas and marketing those ideas so that the machines can keep spinning. So if you're in any of those areas, well, heck, you should reach out to us. Have a great day, everybody.